Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. We've got a ton going on here at Spirit Blade Productions and Christian Geek Central, including our in-depth Bible study for geeks, movie, game, and other entertainment reviews or commentary, live streams, Christian geek news, original audio dramas, and tons more. And on top of all that, you can become a Spirit Blade insider with an influential voice and get access to exclusive content and rewards. It's your involvement as a patron that will keep all of this going and growing. So I want to thank you for your consideration in that. For more information, please check out our Patreon page through the link below at patreon.com slash spiritbladeproductions. Thanks for listening. I do not understand what I do, but for what I want I do, I... Chesed. Chesed. Son of Shalumia. Achiez or... Pedazur. That really means something, doesn't it? Chapter 5 now of Proverbs, verses 1 through 6 in the ESV says, My son, be attentive to my wisdom. Incline your ear to my understanding, that you may keep discretion, and your lips may guard knowledge. For the lips of a forbidden woman drip honey, and her speech is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps follow the path to Sheol. She does not ponder the path of life. Her ways wander, and she does not know it. Mm. What do you think? Mm. What comes to mind? Yeah, you know, this is that uh, that warning against adultery again, yeah. uh, that, that, that often we, we see a lot of, and Solomon's very, very careful to, to instruct his son to, to avoid it. Um, again, I want to emphasize that uh, because the the intended audience is a young man, that's why a woman is used as an example. But a man can be adult an adulterer just as much as a woman can, and so. And we just saw uh, a wisdom personified <clears throat> female just a few right. places back. So. Right. Right. And so, but I, I, I like to keep bringing that out and keep reminding that because it's real easy to get lost in that and think, man, Solomon was really down on women, yeah. <laughs> you know, but that, that's far, far from the, from the case. Um, uh, so hit this idea here of the, the attributes of, uh, an immoral, an immoral person about how, um, uh, you know, the lips and the mouth, it refers to uh, to words and how they sound sweet and enticing. Um, uh, but in the end, it leads to bitterness, and they're actually dangerous, and they can cut you. And here's what I, I, I found very interesting when I, when I first read this, uh, is when, when Solomon was talking about how uh, this – this speech is as sharp as a two-edged sword. Mm. And I immediately went to Hebrews, Hebrews 4.12, where it talks about how the Word of God is sharper than mm. a two-edged sword. Mm. And, and, uh, and how that, the, how, and, and also talks about how that the Word of God is living and how it exposes and, uh, and does not deceive the word of God, when it exposes sin, uh, it, it doesn't deceive you. Um, but the opposite happens with this person who's an adulteress, right? The words that they use and the word that and, and to try and entice you, um, they are there to really to e expose your weakness. Mm. Um, that 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 person, they're going to say things that will draw the worst out of you. Hmm. And and we need to be really careful about that, especially when it comes to flattery. Hmm. Um, uh, because that is kind of what it's talking about, about the speech being smoother than oil and how it drips with honey. He's talking about flattery here. Um, and men in the workplace especially uh, can uh, not realize that they're falling for someone because you know a woman compliments him on his 
uh, on the way he looks that day or on the way something was done and it's it's this flattery can can be very very enticing to a man yeah um, especially if he doesn't feel like he's getting recognition from his wife at home for for some of the things that he does, um, it you know it doesn't doesn't excuse him for what he does or for what he's thinking. It's just that this is a way that that a man can be trapped, and 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 Solomon says this is dangerous because that's a path that leads to death. It's a path that leads to. Uh, to a place where uh, you don't want to end up. Um, and and it, it even says that she doesn't ponder this path. She doesn't ponder the path of life and that she just wanders around and doesn't even doesn't even know it, yeah. doesn't even know what she's doing. Yeah. So and men can again, men can do the same thing, right? Men can yeah. be very flattering to a woman and yeah. do the same thing and not realize that, hey, this person, that you're complimenting on something, this woman's husband hardly ever compliments her on the way she looks, and now you're complimenting her, and that could really lead uh, lead to destruction. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. There's like, uh, yeah, it's it's interesting that's how things look on the surface, those kinds of temptations, versus the reality that follows. You know, and just kind of how he points out. Look, she, her ways are wandering, and as you said, she's not even aware of it. Like, she's got a whole mess going on, mm -hmm. and she's totally, like, she is not your way to a better life, <laughs> you know? Yeah. She's got yeah. her own mess going on, and, and I, I think I heard, I, this is just anecdotal, I don't have any numbers on this, but I think I read a while back that, uh, that like, these, um, these relationships that are started because of an affair... Um, they they don't go anywhere. They don't work out. Even if right. even if that couple goes off together, it goes south. It goes mm. sour. You know, um, and uh, and so for him to just be identifying, you know, like this these things that they look good, this the various sexual temptations, whatever they are, and this could apply apply to pornography as well or any any number of things. You know, um, it might seem harmless. It might seem like it's this good, beautiful thing. You know, mm -hmm. but we are being damaged and we don't even realize yeah. it. And the people that are, you know, maybe uh, dressing the way they are or behaving the way they are, and th they are being foolish and not realizing how they're damaging their own worth because of mm -hmm. the way they're beha behaving and just, uh, yeah, it's, it's just, there's just a mess. It's not what we think it is, I think is the bottom right. line that I see coming right. out here is the, these sexual temptations of various kinds, they are not what we think, what we think they are. Um, okay, should we look at the 7 through 14 now? Yeah. In the ESV, that says, And now, O sons, listen to me, and do not depart from the words of my mouth. Keep your way far from her, and do not go near the door of her house, lest you give your honor to others and your years to the merciless, lest strangers take their fill of your strength, and your labors go to the house of a foreigner. foreigner. And at the end of your life you groan when you're flesh and body are consumed and you say how I hated discipline and my heart despised reproof I did not listen to the voice of my teachers or incline my ear to my instructors I am at the brink of utter ruin in the assembled congregation mm -hmm. mm. Stan, what stands out to you there? yeah I mean this is just talking about what happens when you follow after immorality and um and and Solomon is very clear to say, hear me now. There's an immediacy to this. There is. It's important that you hear this, and that how uh, you're going to look back on your life, and you're going to you're going to find out that you did not live an honorable life. That you squandered your time. Um, you're going to be filled re with regret. And uh, there's even this. Um, it's very interesting here how there's kind of this implied um, physical manifestation of sin in that where he's talking about how uh, your flesh and body are, are consumed. Mm. Um, and, I, you know, I don't want to go down the path of saying any sin that you commit uh, affects you bodily. But if we're talking about adultery— 
that is a sin that you can commit that can affect you physically. Mm. Uh, you know, you can you can catch a disease of some kind, and and the next thing you know, your body is wasted. It will become consumed. Mm-hmm. Um, and or you, so or you, you could have a kid. And, and or you could have a, a kid responsibility that'll affect you physically the rest yeah, of Yeah, that'll <laughs> affect you physically too, exactly. Um, and 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 basically what hap- what happens here is we have this where you're you're first ignoring instruction and then you kind of keep going down and down and down to the point where you hate instruction, mm-hmm. you hate your instructors, you hate yourself because of what you've become and it just leads to utter ruin. Yeah. Yeah, I I um noticed the uh, the call to um kind of set up boundaries here. Mm-hmm. Keep keep in verse uh 8. Keep your way far from her and do not go near the door of her house. You know, it's it's not just like, you know, don't be hanging out with her. It's like, you know what? Don't even go like near her door, you know. Yeah. And uh and I I think that's a reminder that, you know, this is a this is a powerful draw, sexual sin. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's good to set up. We've just got to set up boundaries. And if those yeah. boundaries aren't working, then we've got to beef up those boundaries. I think um, making the choice to have frank, ongoing accountability with a gracious friend who is not themselves struggling with the same sin is really valuable. Um, lots of guys think that they can battle pornography by themselves. Um, mm. Lots of uh, unmarried couples think they can resist going too far before being married. Yeah. And a ton of them are kidding themselves. And, and we should not assume that we uh, are, the, uh, are the exception. Um, and uh, let's see. Oh, it's, it's looking at verses 9 through 14. It's not clear to me, you know... Um, you, know, we, we, you, you brought up some possibilities, some possible applications. He's speaking mm-hmm. pretty broadly here, so it's not really specific of what kinds of specific circumstances are being described in, in verses 9 through 14 as the consequences of sexual sin. But I can imagine a lot of common scenarios that fit this broad description. Mm-hmm. Um, sexual sin, either before or during marriage, does damage to your mind and makes you sexually dysfunctional. Um, yeah. Biblically, sex is completely tied to marriage. It is a, a symbol of Christ and his bride, the church. And we see that in Ephesians 5, 31 and 32, um, which we went through on the podcast a while back. Um, so sex experienced outside the context of marriage actually devalues it. Um, and mm-hmm. it warps your view of what sex is about um, yeah. and, and causes it to be less fulfilling long term. Um, and as far as pornography goes, the damage is not speculation. You can visit yourbrainonporn.com for all the research. Um, yeah. this is, and that's, a you know, um, to anyone that might be eavesdropping that isn't a believer and might think, oh, a site like that sounds like, you know, it has a Christian agenda. It was started up by atheists, you know, and I think right. it's still a completely secular, you know, organization that's basically saying, hey, porn's dangerous. It legit is. Here are the university studies. Here's all the data. You can see it for yourself, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. So, uh, and, and then, you know, that's, that's doing the damage to yourself, you know, sexually. That's like, I think, the, the best case scenario. Sexual sin involving secrets can destroy your career, your marriage, your yeah. immediate family relationships, your extended family relationships, your church relationships. As you said, you start withdrawing and hating, you know, your counselors and, and hating yourself, you know. It, sexual sin destroys, it isolates, it puts you on a path that just keeps spiraling downward away from God. And um, yeah. if, if I can add a side note, uh, this is just, I'm just going to get on my soapbox for a second here. <laughs> um, this, I think, this type of sin, maybe this sin specifically, is why the doctrine of grace is so important. In, mm. in, in churches that get that doctrine wrong, or who don't emphasize it enough, there is this increased fear of confession because everyone is trying even harder to seem like they have it all together. But, yeah. but confession and accountability are how we get out of those messes when we find ourselves there. Um, so to anyone listening or watching, if you're in a church that isn't emphasizing the tireless grace, the tireless mercy, the tireless forgiveness provided by Jesus, my gut reaction, this is an actual counsel, 
because it's, <laughs> I don't know who's listening, but my gut reaction is just to say, get out of there, get out of a church that is not doing yeah. those things and not emphasizing those things. Get to a church where you can confess and then heal and move forward as a result. You know? Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, you know, and and when you consider, you know, when you consider what the penalty for adultery was in this culture, uh, grace is <laughs> grace is so so important. It's so so important, um, uh, and 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 we definitely need to see. We need to see more of that in our churches. I think. I think a lot of churches are, you know, they're, they're so concerned about how those things make them appear. Oh, this big scandal happened instead of just like hitting it hard right in the bud and saying, okay, yes, this happened and we are going to fix this and we're going to do it with grace and with mercy. Yeah. Um, and that may mean someone stepping away or stepping down, especially if they're in a position of leadership for a period of time. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it may mean stepping, stepping away from that, stepping away from that church, yeah. but still being involved in that healing process with, whoever else they may have committed a sin with uh, in, in that church. And so uh, it's, it's, it's tough. We've, w you know, we have a small church and we've had to deal with some major situations that have come up. Mm. And, um, and in, in, in one case, I, I understand why, uh, why this person wanted to step away is because there were children involved mm. and they didn't want questions being, you know, people asking the children questions that yeah. would make them uncomfortable. And so I, I get that, uh, but it, it made my heart feel heavy because we couldn't share in that uh, renewing and healing process with this person. Yeah. Um, uh, but, but it, um, it, it is important that 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 we do extend grace to those people who have fallen into sexual sin, uh, because that's the big taboo right now in the church. No one makes a big deal if someone is lying constantly, which I don't know why why that's or or someone who's a glutton or yeah. I mean we could just run down the list of the, you know let's yeah. you know go to we go to Ephesians or Corinthians and see this see these lists of things that Paul mentioned, yeah. but somehow we tend to hone in on sexual sin. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yep. So, but yeah, yeah. I mean, grace is it. Grace is very, very important, very important in situations like this.